Hello. Hi. Hello. Good morning. So thank you uh, for meeting with us today and congratulations on a third season. That's ah. so exciting. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Now you are both um, quite the accomplished young actors. Uh, you're like, seriously, your resumes are ridiculous. And you have had a lot of work in both live action and voice acting roles. Do you, like, does your creative process differ for those, like in the preparation that you do? And do you have a preference? Um, Rainy's been doing this longer than me, so I'll give this question to her. <laughs> um. Yes and no. So I feel like as an actor, I sort of approach every script with like good character breakdown, figuring out, you know, where I fit in the show, the movie or the scene, um, what my character's, you know, goal is, point of view, her relationship between herself and the other characters and whatnot. As for voiceovers, I prepare a little bit more with like a lot of throat coat tea, a lot of warm water. Um, I know it sounds funny. Sometimes I have to stretch a little bit because especially for this show, uh, when you're running from dinosaurs, you're not necessarily like running in the booth itself, but it's a lot of like <laughs> heavy breathing. So <laughs> you kind of got to get into a mental state for that just because uh, you will pass out or hyperventilate in the booth itself. Uh, but for the most part, I prefer it all. You know, when you're doing voiceovers, it's great because you can literally wear your PJs, especially when we're at home recording. So we can uh, quite literally wear our PJs while we record. Um, versus live action when, you know, you got to show up professional. Um, so that's kind of a, a fun thing to do. But I, I definitely enjoy the whole aspect of, you know, filmmaking and, and, and recording and being on set and things like that. I, I do miss a little bit of the uh, in-person interactions that we would get to have in our recording booths if we were like all in Los Angeles together. Uh, but for the most part, I love it all. Just the whole creative process is exciting. I was going to say, did you want to add anything, even though I know you said you're going to give it to her? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, Rainy, basically, she's always like giving the best answer. Um, but yeah, um, I'd say that it's, there are just these slight little differences in between. Um, I'd say for on-camera acting, I guess you have to get into, uh, the, the main thing is getting into the physicality of it. And then for voice acting, it's kind of like that, but like to a slightly higher degree because you're portraying everything through your voice. Like you, people can't see what you're doing inside the booth. So it's like, you have to, you, you have to continue to portray. And then on top of all the stuff that's going on in Jurassic World that you would like never scream about in real life or anything. So, uh, yeah, I feel like um, they're, they, they feel like two different worlds despite being in the same industry. Like Jana was saying, you both have done so much and you're kind of talking about how you prepare for your roles uh, doing the voice acting. What has it been like working through this show over the three seasons? How uh, has your character changed? Are there aspects of you that you find in your character that you just, you know, that that's you, straight up you? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Sammy, I, I tell everybody, Sammy is like a heightened version of myself. She's, she's definitely me, but like times 10. Uh, we, you know, we both come from Texas. I was born in Bryan, Texas, and she's from San Antonio. We both have big Latino families, and we're both, both sort of like the, uh, the mother hen, the nurturer of the group. She for sure comes to Camp Cretaceous and, ex and expects everybody to already be best friends and to be like a camp fam already. So sometimes when that doesn't happen, she's kind of like thrown off. Uh, especially meeting people like Yaz and you know Yaz was super shy when she first met her and quiet and Sammy didn't quite understand what that meant and oh, what was that like to, to not be an extrovert uh, for sure we're definitely a lot like each other I feel like I don't know for sure if I would have survived this long in um, Jurassic World as much as Sammy has uh, but for sure she's been leaning on her friends a lot which is really nice uh, but I, I really do enjoy over the courses of the seasons like finding more things that I myself as Rainy can put in that that Sammy would would um, have as well, like her um, wrangling up, you know, dinosaurs or talking to the other campers and and being like, you know, the nice one. I understand. I'm here for you. I'm listening. I'm caring. And then they don't listen. And she's like, okay, enough of this. You're gonna do what I say, and you're gonna do it right now. And I have ten nieces and nephews, so I know exactly what that's like <laughs> to be like, all right, everybody, let's play. Okay, you know, we're not gonna play like that. Let's follow the rules here. So I know exactly what that's like to be able to kind of throw myself take some of my real life situations, even though 
my nieces and nephews are not dinosaurs. Sometimes they're kind of the same thing. Um, so to be able to take some of that as an ant and throw that in there as well is really fun. Uh, yeah, I definitely have to agree with Rainy. Um, one thing that um, people keep saying that um, I look like Darius because I used to have big hair for people that uh, for people that have seen me like back when I was recording season one and two. Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, I know that, um, I feel like I always have that optimism that Darius has, and I'm always trying to like keep a smile on everybody's faces because uh, friendship makes the world go round. <laughs> um, but um, a, a fun part of the, of the characters is um, their dynamic and how much, they, how much they connect to each other despite being from totally different backgrounds and being from all around the United States. And um, I feel like a lot of that also comes from like our cast's dynamic because we also come from a bunch of different backgrounds. And um, I, it's just the, the chemistry between uh, the Jurassic camp family and the camp family behind the Jurassic camp family. <laughs> it, it's just like, it's, we're all just one big family. And there have been times when we've like, gone over recording times because we just keep screwing around in the booth and, and making jokes and having fun um but yeah I feel like uh I feel like that's like where we've connected like our connection and chemistry inside of the booth has definitely helped uh the connection of our characters and that's the one thing I love about this show well it's great talking to you both today I mean season three I just screened it so no spoilers but I think it's the biggest and probably the scariest yet. And I'm just super curious, your your characters have evolved, the story has evolved, campers have been on the island now for six months. How do you keep making the stakes bigger and more exciting? Um, man, <laughs> um, <laughs> one thing I can say is, um, I always have to give shout outs to our animators and our writers and our producers. And a really big shout out to um, our studio director, Serena Irwin. She's fantastic we couldn't have made it without her um but I feel like um there there's a lot that goes into making a show and uh, all the people that I just referenced are definitely like it can't happen without them um some of the stuff that happens in season three shocked me and I <laughs> I was I've read everything like three times over um but I mean it's just that in season three, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on. As you might know, there are like a few uh, jump scares here and there, family-friendly jump scares, of course, um, but it's definitely out of the ordinary. And it also goes to show how much this season is kind of giving you stuff that's out of the ordinary. Like there are new threats that we haven't seen before. Um, there's this crazy new hybrid dinosaur that's coming out um, that we have, no knowledge about and the only reason they survived on the island for this long is because of their knowledge of like animals and how they react and this is something that they've never heard about or learned about and it's completely unpredictable so I definitely think it's going to make for a very interesting and very suspenseful season. I definitely agree with Paul our writers come up with such amazing stories and not only do they have, you know, stories to look up on to sort of set examples from the books and, you know, the previous, you know, franchise movies and things like that, but it's just like, to be able to put a season, each season, like Paul said, like, I get shocked every time I read the script too, and when I got to watch some of season three, same thing, I was like, oh my gosh, I remember reading this in the script, but that's what it's going to look like? Like, this is so scary, this is awesome! So I, I think for sure it's really great to bring in new aspects of it for sure. And, and being on the show and, and our season three already, you know, we're kind of in an unfamiliar timeline. So we sort of get to set the tone of what we want to do on our show. And we have the freedom to do that. And our writers have completely taken that to, to heart and have added so many fun things to the franchise itself. Like Paul said, you know, some new never before seen threats, things that happen on the island that, you know, the kids can't even believe is happening to them obviously character development. There's so many things that you can touch up on just the characters alone of, you know, their backgrounds and how they're responding to that and then being on the island together. And there's so many storylines that you can put together for season three. And I'm so excited for everyone to see it and see what our amazing team has come up with this season. I'm very curious because you've been together already for three seasons and 
of course, you, you might have had the chance to record together pre all this crazy world that we have now. Um, and the team is such a wonderful team on the animation. It feels really like you have all come together as a band when you are in the booth. Do you have special funny anecdotes to share about recording together or maybe about the difficulties of recording together remotely? So when we're together, like in person together in the booth, we have so much fun. Obviously, you know, to get to, I remember we all got to take a special trip to DreamWorks and record in their studio at DreamWorks, which I had never been to before. It's like in a deep basement with like no cell service, but it was really cool to be able to be in a big old room and just all, you know, six of us record together. Um, but when we had to switch over to Zoom recordings because of quarantine and things like that, I feel like that's really where we started to have even more fun together, especially because we're not in the same room. And it's kind of hard to get everybody together, you know, to like chit chat and hang out and just have a Zoom just to hang out. And, you know, it really is a good excuse to get together because it's for work and, you know, you make time for work. And it's, uh, that's really our time was when we chose to make it our, our hangout time. And we're in the middle of recording an episode and we're sending like DMs to each other through the Zoom chat. Um, to make each other laugh, or if someone has a certain line that they say that maybe they're messing up on, or, you know, the director wants it a certain way, and it takes more than, you know, three takes, and then we'll change that, we'll take that line and, like, make fun of the line and, like, put it as our name. Um, at one point, we all changed our name to Sean Gambroni, who voices Ben. <laughs> so then we were all Sean Gambroni on Zoom, and there's six cast members, and then we all turned off our cameras um, to be funny. So when they're like, oh, Rainy, we, uh, Rainy, are you there, Rainy? Uh, okay, I'm seeing a lot of Sean Gambroni. Uh, which one is Rainy? And then we would all cut our cameras on. Like things like that would just make the uh, the experience so much more fun. We we record like four hours at a time, so to be able to have that fun and goof off a lot. I know we enjoyed it. I'm sure DreamWorks every now and then was like, guys, we got to stay on schedule, guys. We got to get this season out eventually. Uh, but we we enjoyed it so much. Yeah, uh, I definitely have to say the same thing because um, just our chemistry as a cast developed so quickly because like there were, we had so much fun. Um, I think I remember one time, like once, I think once me, Causer, and Rainey and uh, Ryan, we got into the booth and then the last person to walk in was Jenna and she was literally wearing a onesie to the recording. And we were like, we immediately all got the thought that like, okay, next time we all get into the same recording, we're all just going to wear our one. <laughs> we're all just going to wear one. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's stuff like that that just makes my day every time because like we're all just, uh, we're all friends. And Rainy, uh, she's like the mother of the entire group. Like she <laughs> made a group chat and like, we're all like constantly like texting each other, like, oh, look at this article that just posted or hey, happy birthday. And like, I mean, it's so fun to get to work with people, especially in a time like this when you don't really get to see people. Um, it's definitely an awesome experience to just keep the conversation going and having lots of fun. Uh, but yeah, like Randy was saying, we've also had cr like crazy stuff happen in our in our uh, at home recordings. Um, I remember, I remember this is this is never gonna like I'm never gonna live this down. Uh, I used to have a gamer tag this one time. And um, I was so embarrassed of the tag because it was something like XX Blood Runner XX or something like that. It was very edgy. And um, that it was day, so edgy. right? <laughs> I had logged into my I had logged into Zoom through my email, and um, that was like my name in the email because it was supposed to be my gaming email for non-work stuff. And everybody saw that name, and they were so confused. And then for that entire session, people kept naming their names, stuff like that. And I was like, oh gosh, this is never gonna end. I think, at yeah. one point, I think at one point they kicked him out because we thought it was like someone that sort of hacked onto the recording somehow. Yeah. <laughs> he like turned his camera on. We're like, Ugh, this person doesn't belong here. And we like kicked him out. And then he signed back on and someone <laughs> came on from DreamWorks. They're like, I think that's Paul. And we're like, oh. So then everybody would change their name to his gamer tag um, or be like, I only want to be referred to as, you know, XX. Blood Runner XX, please. Um, so yeah, it, it's we definitely make fun of them still for that <laughs> to this day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fly in the wall with you, you guys recording either virtually or not. So much fun. Thank you guys.
Hey guys, thank you so much. This has been fun. And I love hearing these great stories about you and these Zoom sessions and the group chats. So obviously you guys have a great friendship going on. So I'd love to know who is your favorite friendship from the show? Ooh. I think I can answer. Well, oh, that's actually kind of tough. That's a really tough question. Because in season, uh, in season three, we see all of these friendships that kind of start developing in different ways. Like, um, Kenji and Sammy, they, uh, they start having fun. Um, Darius and Ben, you see them start to connect also and like relive past things. And, and, um, and Brooklyn and Sammy, they kind of like go on this like detective adventure. <laughs> and um, it's like, there, there, <laughs> there are so many different character dynamics and pair ups that we still have yet to happen. So like um, one thing that I'm also anticipating is something that happens like between Darius and Sammy or, or Darius and Yasmina or like Sammy and Ben, something, something like completely out of the ordinary. That would be awesome. Uh, but yeah, I got to say, I don't have a favorite because <laughs> there are just so many different pair ups that like are amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with that. I think everybody's uh, qualities, first of all, just the qualities to their voices alone, like when you hear their different characters interact with each other is what makes it funny. Like anything that Ryan Potter does as Kenji is just hilarious. So anytime he talks to anybody and like Paul mentioned, Sammy and Kenji get to have some fun moments this season where we get to see like their goofier side for both of them come out. I mean, let's be real. Kenji's character has been goofy for three seasons, but to really see like Sammy sort of joining on the fun on that, I really, really love that. Um, Cause anything Ryan does is hilarious. Anything Sean does is hilarious. Um, and I would, I love the whole dynamic of like um, Yasmina and Sammy, how Yasmina is so like um, straightforward and like the way that cause voices her is just, it's not monotone. It, there's so much emotion behind her voice, but like the energy level is like at a two or three versus Sammy who like every line is a 10. So it's like, it's so funny to be able to voice that with, with Causer and, and uh, some of that comes up in, in season three of, of our friendship and the way that we voice with each other and things like that. So I don't know, any pairing together is hilarious because our writers write such funny stuff or emotional stuff. You're going to see some of that this season as well. Some really, really nice heart to hearts and some tug at the heartstring moments and some some really nice vulnerability and emotion that these characters sort of get to show you in their layers that we've seen the, in the past three seasons. And I'm really excited for people to see what it's like when the kids get to have fun and be kids, even though they're on like a deadly island, that they still get to have fun and be kids. But then when they get to band together and fight for a cause and, you know, try to get off the island again. I love seeing those moments too, because the way that we all go about approaching it, you know, with our voices and our actions and things like that is, is so beautiful. So I'm, I'm excited for everybody to see all the different pairings. I think they're going to have new favorites this season. I'm excited to hear what the fans think about this season for the pairing. You guys have been playing these characters now for three seasons. If you could be any other character in the show beside your besides your own character, who would you be? Um, I, I feel like it kind of influences like uh, the character's attributes because um, as uh, me and Rainy have said before, all of the characters take, we, all of the cast takes attributes from every single one of the characters in, in like different ways. Um, but I don't know, Sammy, I mean, <laughs> Rainy, you might have to go first on this one. Ooh, that's super hard. Um, out of the six kids, I would probably love to be, um, it's either going to be between Darius or Ben, just because I love Darius's vast knowledge of the dinosaurs and, and, and the whole thing about Camp Cretaceous and everything about the, the Jurassic world in general. Um, Plus, it would just force me to learn the dinosaur names because when we get our scripts, I guarantee you, the other five cast members, we like go through it to make sure we're not the ones having to say the super long dinosaur names. It's always Paul that has to say it. And, and when we're in recordings together and he'll say it like the first take and we're like, oh, thank God. Because like sometimes he'll say it and then later on like another character will repeat it. So I, I would love to be that guy, the smart one that knows everything about the dinosaurs and how to pronounce their names right off the bat. Um, I always say, well, I'm from Texas. We don't have that word in Texas. Uh, <laughs> I know T-Rex, Triceratops, you know, th those are the only ones we know in Texas. Uh, and then I would love to be Ben 
just because I think Sean is hilarious. And the way that the character of Ben is just written is just hilarious. And I love the whole character arc, how from season one to season two, he does like a 180 of like this, you know, shy, timid, scared Ben. And then now he's like primal Ben, like just, you know, the the king of the jungle out there. So I would love to to get to have fun with that as well. Um, yeah, I definitely have to agree. Um, that I, that brings up a funny story. I think in like my fourth recording, um, at the end of the recording, our uh, one of the producers, Scott Kramer, he um, he brought these these he brought these dinosaur flashcards for me to read so I could get the so I could get the dinosaur names. But the funniest part about it was we still didn't know how to pronounce them even when the names were like <laughs> clear right there so then we had to like get uh then we had to get these literal audio files that they would play in the booth so i would know how to pronounce them but um yeah uh if i had to choose two characters i would say because i can i can only choose two characters yeah, I, I, just cheated. One. <laughs> I literally would love to play anybody else in this show as well like anything to be a part of the show. I'll be a dinosaur. We've had to roar a couple times, scream, things like that. So I, anything, <laughs> anything to still be a part of the show, I would play it. Just sign me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I'd have to say like Kenji and Sammy, like in season three, as like we had said before, their, uh, their character pairing is just so funny and so energetic and so fun. Um, just being Kenji, being this like nonchalant chill guy that's just always resting while everybody else does the work I'd say that's like that's me about half the time <laughs> um, <laughs> but um I I definitely have to say I would also want to be Sammy because she's like the she's the glue of the entire camp family and she's always keeping everything together and she always has a smile on her face no matter what and like that's like an attribute that I would love to have all the time that she does so like I, it's so hard to choose. I can't choose, but I can't choose just one. It's no. <laughs> <laughs> you can have more than one. That's fine. And also you just need to find like a four or five year old to help you with those dinosaur names because my nephews like know all of them. They're all, I mean, they just recite them and you're like, how did you learn that? Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. So I, I was cracking up that you're, you had to get help pronouncing the names because I can only <laughs> imagine because not only like dinosaur names, but there'll be other things on the internet that I'm like, oh my God, what? I'm yeah. a smart person, but I don't know how to say oh, this. <laughs> you feel really smart, and then they put like a like a 26 letter dinosaur <laughs> name in front of you, and you're like, ah, so this is this is this is the end for me. This is this is <laughs> cool. cool. Like this is this is where I lose my job. Yep, oh, here we go. Great, great. <laughs> or like sometimes I'll be like in the middle of recording, and Sammy talks very fast, and I'll be in the middle of recording something, and I'll just like completely botch the dinosaur name and I'll be like ah I know what it is hold on sorry uh, the so great. if you had to pick a favorite dinosaur in the show and hopefully it's an easy name to say <laughs> uh what would it be or who would it be and why are they like, your favorite <laughs> I feel like our answers have like very rarely changed over these past few seasons because there's been one dinosaur that has been just completely flooring the the competition with us um i gotta say the the um the hybrid dinosaur that's coming out is kind of like a close second for me just because of uh again shout out to our animators and our writers who created this crazy thing um um but again bumpy is always going to be like the showstopper for me um even in like even with this accelerated growth where she's like 10 Massive. weighing 10 tons and huge now <laughs> she's always like this cutest she's she's still cute to me so yeah yeah I 100% agree it would have to be bumpy I mean let's be real bumpy is everyone's favorite I mean bumpy has been through so much with the campers she is basically like our seventh cast member <laughs> let's be real no I I love bumpy I, I love the whole thing about her I love that we got to watch her literally hatch from an egg and I love that our writers have consistently up until season three like kept her in and we see her you know growing with us and and going through the emotions and sort of learning from her the way that she's learning to trust us we're learning to trust her and helping her out with that plus the kids love bumpy my nieces and nephews just adore bumpy but it's bumpy 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 so for sure her but I agree with uh with Paul I love the 
the uh, unrevealed dinosaur for this season as well, I think is going to be really fun and uh, really surprising for the fans to see. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I have to add one more thing onto um, what Rainey said was one thing that, um, that has always been going on with this show is the dinosaurs have always been the main, they've always been the main cast member. Like that's, it's what this show is based around. And to see something as intricate as emotion and something like an ankylosaurus like Bumpy is fantastic because in season three, um, you get to see a lot of like the, a lot of not a, a, not a lot of physical conflict, not just physical conflict, but a lot of mental and emotional conflict too. And one thing that I saw a lot of that in was Bumpy, which was really surprising because you, you'd never think like, oh, this dinosaur, like you can clearly see that this dinosaur is like sad or mad or something like that. Like you've never seen it on such a, such a specific level. And that's what I love about this show is they give dinosaurs all of the credit, which they should, because they're like the cornerstone of what this is about. Thanks. Yeah, my kids are team Bumpy, so yeah. they'll be happy you said that. <laughs> Bumpy's the number one dinosaur. <laughs> right. So the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World franchise is loved by so many adults and kids alike. When you guys joined Camp Cretaceous, did you expect such a warm fan reaction? I've seen so much like art and like love online for all the characters. Did you expect it? And what's it been like putting part of this kind of fandom? I think I speak for both of us and the entire show when I'm like, we were hoping for that warm love and welcoming into the franchise. It's always a risk throwing something new to something that is so beloved and is so well known around the world. Um, to have a show like this, it to be animated and we're kids and we're the forefront of the show where most of the time it's always been adults and, and kids have been, you know, a focal point of the franchise, but to have them the main characters of this show, um, you know, getting to introduce new timelines, new dinosaurs, new threats, new things, getting to explore Isla Nublar even more and, and you know, getting to invent the whole world of Camp Cretaceous. I think anything like that is always a risk. And I feel like it's really paid off because the fans have quite literally welcomed us with open arms. They are so excited. I, I like you, I've seen the fan art. I've seen the the tweets and the, the the DMs and the comments of, you know, what's going to happen this season and, oh, here are my theories and, oh, I love this pairing or, oh, I love this and, you know, is this dinosaur going to come back and, oh, look at the toys and look what they've, you know, uh, sent out next. And, is this a spoiler? What does this mean? Like, they're so invested and I love it so, so, so much. It's always, um, it's always a little bit of a risk entering something this big and to have the love and the welcoming that we've had, we are so incredibly grateful and so, so lucky to get to go on this ride with the fans because we are fans ourselves now. And so to sort of join them on this ride is, is super, super exciting. Right. And I 100% have to agree with Rainy that like, it was a risk because making, um, making a spinoff, I guess like prequel, sequel, three, <laughs> like two, three totally different things in a timeline. It was definitely a risk because, um, I guess when you're making something like this, you you feel like that moral obligation to hit the expectation of what uh, its predecessors were. And seeing the fans just welcome the show with open arms and smiles and saying like, this show is amazing. It's, it's definitely something that I was hoping for. And um, uh, seeing, uh, I completely and utterly forgot what I was just about to say, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm gonna end it there because I, I I I forgot I forgot what I was gonna say. All right, guys. So we're we're definitely very excited about all the different seasons, and thank you for offering us such wonderful shows. I wanted to know of everything you've done so far for your uh, character. What is the one thing you're proudest about bringing your character to life? Um, say it one more time. I'm sorry, my internet. You cut out just for that last part. Yes, I'm, I'm curious to know what is the one thing that you're the proudest about bringing your character to life? Her strength and um, her perseverance to keep going forward. And I think like Darius, she tries to be optimistic and she tries to see the brighter side of things. And in Sammy's mind, for her, 
Camp Fam is something that can happen for life. And she wants everybody to be together because the power of togetherness for her is something that nobody can ever break. So I love showing those qualities, especially to young girls. Um, we have such a great example of, of three strong females on our show that all have different backgrounds and different personalities, but their main focus is moving forward and whatever that takes, a little bit of sacrifice, a little bit of hard work, um, breaking out of their shell, um, you know, showing their vulnerability and, and opening up to others around them. But their main purpose is to keep moving forward and, and keeping everyone together. And I love, love showcasing that about Sammy. I love that she's Latina. I love that she comes from a big family. I love that she's a little bit more different than, than the kids there at Camp Cretaceous, but she does not let that stop her in being who she is. Sammy's number one thing is always just live your truth and always be who you are. And she loves showcasing that. So I love getting to voice that and getting to show her strengths and the fun that she has and her energy and her M and, you know, her infectious love that she has just for this camp and her newfound friends. And I love, love getting to portray that. Um, yes, I definitely have to agree with Rainey. Um, the diversity in this, in these six characters is fantastic because there's so much relatability in this cast. Um, I think the one thing that I always am proud of pulling from Darius is um, is his 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 willingness to take leadership, because although he might not be in he again he's just he's thirteen years old, <laughs> so uh, being on an island with five other kids um, taking that role of leader in trying to, like Rainey was saying, push through and have perseverance despite not really having perseverance yourself is definitely something that, um, that we all need. So yeah, I'm definitely, I definitely feel like um, leadership is probably his highest quality that I think we should all take from the show. All right, so this is a quick question and it is directed towards these hybrid dinosaurs, especially the one that we get to see this this um, uh, this season. So I'm excited. So if you could create your own breed of dinosaur, what would you cross together? Oh my goodness. This that would a look. <laughs> this is a fast, the question might've been fast, but is the answer gonna be fast? Right. right? Quick animal, two quick animals or reptiles that you would pair. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. It feels like if you pair stuff, it would look it would look weird, huh? Yeah. You know, like a centaur, like a centaur dinosaur. Right. <laughs> Something really strange like that. Well, my first answer was like, I love like cheetah print or like, you know, that sort of thing. Oh my gosh, can you imagine like a unicorn dinosaur? Like like a colorful dinosaur though? Like, mm. like a, almost like a chameleon one that sort of like has like pretty colors with it maybe um but there is sort of like one that like that that kind of can like ooh, i that, oh my god that's a good question <laughs> um, uh man uh well i guess like I, I, I was like what about like a unicorn fish but i guess it's like a norwal so <laughs> <laughs> i'm like ooh, that, that sparks a question something. nope that's already been invented <laughs> That's that sparks a question. What if I I feel like I feel like a narwhal could be a dinosaur? I mean, of course it's a fish, but it seems like it could have like some sort of dinosaur DNA yeah. in it. Um, I mean, Dominus could swim like like you know, one of those things, and and that was kind of that was kind of weird too, the way that it could get in there. Maybe mm -hmm. like a um like a an ape monkey dinosaur, one that could like climb the the trees really really fast and like jump from tree to tree. That would be scary. Yeah, you guys should get a run for your money with that one. <laughs> oh, that well, would be guys. like um, that would be like a uh, uh, what's the movie that just came out? That'd be like a Godzilla and King yeah, like Kong mix. Kong yeah. Thing. Yeah. Like yeah. A, whole, a whole collaboration. Oh, that would be scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.